So moving with the next question, question number 27. In figure the potential difference between the points P and Q. Okay, so these are two points P and Q and we have to find the potential difference between these points. Here you can see there is a voltage source that is connected and that is a 10 volt source. That means the voltage at point R is actually 10 volt and a 2 ampere source is connected between P and Q. Now we are going to make equations to find out the voltage potential difference between P and Q. Now this is the figure that is given. Uh, there is a 10 volt source and then there is a 2 ampere. Uh, there is a 10 volt voltage source and there is a 2 ampere source that is given. So we are taking the point R to be having a value of 10 volt. Okay. So he, we are going to make a Kirchhoff's current law equations by considering Vr is equal to 10 volt. Okay. Now we are going to make equations at a P with respect to P. So we are making equation with respect to P means P minus 10 volt. P minus 10 divided by 2. P minus 10 divided by 2 plus 2 because it is the outgoing current plus 2 and P VP divided by 8 is equal to 0 is equation number 1. Correspondingly, you can make equation at Q also because it is VQ minus 10 divided by 4 minus 2 plus VQ by 6 is equal to 0 is equation number 2. And solving these two equations, you can find out the value of Vp and Vq. Because these two equations are two equations in two unknowns Vp and Vq. So solving these equations, you will get the value of Vp as 4.8. And you can get the value of Vq as 10.8. Now we want to find out the uh, potential difference between P and Q. So finding the potential difference between P and Q means it is Vp minus Vq. It is Vp minus Vq. So that means it is 4.8 minus 10.8 or our answer will be minus 6 volt. So which choice is our answer? Our answer choice is C which is equal to minus 6 volt. So this is about question number 27. Now moving into question number 28. Find the value of R. We have to find the value of R. In the figure the value of R is what is the question. Here there is a 100 volt source, there is a 40 volt source, there is 10 ampere current, 5 ampere current and then this 14 ohm, 1 ohm and 2 ohms. So we will have to find out the value of R, resistance R. How can we find out the value of resistor R? We have recreated the same figure and we are making the Kirchhoff's current law equation with respect to P. So this is our node P. So we are making equations with respect to P. So it is Vp minus, what is the voltage here? The voltage here is 40 and what is the voltage here? It is 100, okay? So it is Vp minus 40, Vp minus 40 divided by 1 plus Vp minus 100 divided by 14 plus Vp divided by 2 is equal to 0. This is equation number 1, okay? And from this equation, you can find that Vp, 22 Vp is equal to 660 or you will obtain Vp to be 30 volt. So we have got the value of Vp. Now the potential difference between nodes X and Y. This is node X and this is node Y. What is the potential difference between nodes X and Y? It is 100 minus 40 because node X is at 100 and node Y is at 40. So potential difference between X and Y is 100 minus 40 or it is equal to 60 volt. Okay. Now we are going to make KCL equations at node Y. Making KCL equations at node Y. It is node Y. Node Y, there is an incoming current I, it is minus I. There is another incoming current 5, which is minus 5. And then there is 40 minus 30. So what is voltage of P? Voltage of P is 30. So it is 40 minus 30 divided by 1 is equal to 0. From which you will be able to obtain the value of current I, which will come to be 12 Ambiers. It will come to be 12 Ambiers. Uh, not, um, uh, uh, from this equation, uh, it will come to be, it is 30 minus 40 minus 30 divided by 1. What is 40 minus 30? It will come to be 10. So it is minus 5. So here I will become equal to 5 Ambiers. I will become equal to 5 Ambiers. Okay. And what is to be found out? 
we will have to find out the value of resistance R. Okay, we are going to find out the value of resistance R. So resistance R is equal to resistance R is equal to what is the potential difference between the endpoints of R? It is 100 minus 40 is equal to 60. And what is the current I flowing through R? It is 5 amperes. So what is R? R is equal to V divided by I. What is V? V is equal to 60 because it is 100 minus 40 which is equal to 60 and I is equal to 5 because we have obtained I to be 5. So what is the value of R? R becomes equal to 12 ohm. R becomes equal to 12 ohm. So for question number 28 our answer is option D which is equal to 12 ohm. Now moving into question number 29, in figure the value of the source voltage, we will have to find out the value of the source voltage. Here there is a source voltage, we will have to find out the value of the source voltage. So recreating this figure, we are going to find out the value of E. Okay, so it is a 10 ohm, 6 ohm and this is 6 ohm. You can assume this to be resistors, it is there no need to assume it as inductors, assume it as resistors. So we will have to find out the value of E. So by using node equations at VA, by using node equations, writing node equations at VA, there is minus 1 ampere which is incoming and then there is VA divided by 6 and then there is VA minus E divided by 6, VA minus E divided by 6 as equation number 1. So from this expression you have two unknowns VA and E. So we can make an equation for VA and E as 2 VA minus E is equal to 6. Uh, whereas you can see the current in this arm is given. So that means what is current in that arm? Current in that arm is VA minus E divided by 6 is equal to 2 amperes. So VA minus or you can take it as E minus VA. So here we are taking it as E minus VA by 6 ohm is equal to 2 is equal to 2. So that means E minus VA is equal to 12. So you can take this as equation number 1, this as equation number 2 because the first equation is in E and VA, second equation also is in E and VA. So solving these two equations you will get the value of E and VA as E is equal to 30 volt and VA is equal to 18 volt. So what is our answer? Our answer is option C which is equal to 30 volt. Because they are asking for the source voltage. So what is the source voltage that we are obtaining? We are obtaining source voltage E to be 30 volt. So our answer is option C which is 30 volt. Now moving into question number 30. In figure admittance values of the elements in Siemens as YR is equal to 0.5 plus J 0, YL is equal to 0 minus J 1.5 and YC is equal to 0 plus J 0.3 respectively. The value of I in phasor is to be found out when the voltage E across the elements is 10 angle 0 degree. That is what is the question. So YR, YL and YC are given. Okay, YR, YL and YC are given and the voltage across these admittances are also given. So that means we will be able to find out the value of IR, IL and IC because what is uh, I, I is equal to YV. V is already given as 10 angle 0 degree. Y is also given. So we can find IR, IY and IC as YV. As YV because it is YR into uh, e which is 10 angle 0 it is YL into E and it is also YE into E so once you get IR IY and IC total current is equal to IR plus IY plus IC you can sum it up and you will get the value as 5 minus J 12 amperes continuing with the question number 31 in the figure the value of resistance R in ohms is to be found out. So what is R? This is R. So we will have to find the value of this R. So what is current passing through R? It is given as 2 amperes. So we are going to redraw this figure and we will have to find out the value of R. So what we are going to do is that we are going to write KCL equations at node P. So it is VP minus 100 divided by 10 plus VP by 10 plus VP by R or you can take that this as outgoing current 2 amperes. So you can take it as plus 2 is equal to 0. So this is Vp minus 100 divided by 10 plus Vp by 10 
plus 2 is equal to 0. From this you can solve for Vp. So you obtain Vp as 40 volt. So you are obtaining Vp as 40 volt. So when you are obtaining Vp as 40 volt, Vp divided by R. So that means 40 divided by R is equal to 2 amperes. Isn't it? So um, what is R? What is R? R is equal to V into R is equal to V by I. R is equal to V by I. Now we will have to find out the value of R. So what is V? V is equal to 40. And what is I? I is equal to 2. So what will be the value of R? Uh, the value of R will be 20 ohm. The value of R will be 20 ohm which is option B. So for question number 31, our answer is option B which is equal to 20 ohms. Now going into question number 32. In figure RA, RB and RC are 20 ohm, 10 ohm and 10 ohm respectively. Resistance R1, R2, R3 of the equivalent star connection. This is a pure uh, form of conversion of uh, delta to star. The converting delta to star. So um, here it is given as it is 20, 10 and 10. It is 20, 10 and 10. You have to convert it into star. So it is actually delta to star. So that means the denominator is the same and it is the sum. So that means it is 40. Okay. And then you will have to find the value of um, but you will find the value of the numerator. So that means this is R I R B and R C. You have to convert it into star. It is given as 20, 10 and 10. 20, 10 and 10. So that means your denominator is 40. And your numerator can be 10 into 10. So that means 100 divided by 40. And then it can be 200 divided by 40. And again it can be 200 divided by 40. So this is our answer. So it is 100 divided by 40. 200 divided by 40. And again 200 divided by 40 which will come to 2.5, 5 and 5. So it is 200 divided by 40 cancels to be 5. These two cancels to be 5 and 5. This becomes 1 by 4 or it is equal to 2.5. So that means our answer is 2.5, 5 and 5. So which is the option? Our option is option A. Because option A is 2.5, 5 and 5. So now moving into question number 33, RMS value of the current in a wire which carries a DC current of 10 ampere and a sinusoidal alternating current of peak value 20 ampere is. So it means it, comes, it, it carries both a DC component and an AC component. So the RMS value of the current in a wire which carries a DC current of 10 ampere, it carries a DC current of 10 ampere. And a sinusoidal alternating current of peak value 20 amperes. Okay. So we will have to find the net effect on the wire. So the RMS value of DC current carried is 10 ampere. And the RMS value of the sinusoidal current having the peak value 20 is 20 by root 2. 20 by root 2. So what is the net current? Net current is equal to IDC square plus IAC square which is 10 square plus 20 by root to the whole square, the whole root which will come to 17.32. 17.32. So that means our option D will be the answer. 17.32 for question number 33. Now moving into question number 34. In the figure given below, the value of resistance R. So this is 2005 unmarked question. We will have to find the value of R. Similar question we have already done. So we will be making equations at the node. So, 100 volt is given, resistance is to be found out, this is 10 ohm and 10 ohm. This 10 ohm, 10 ohm is in parallel, so there is no need of making equations at this node. 10 ohm, 10 ohm in parallel means this is 5 ohm, okay. So, 100 divided by, divided by uh, R plus 5 equals 8, equals 8 amperes. So, that means R plus 5 is equal to 100 divided by 8. Okay, so R plus 5 is equal to 100 divided by 8 and then you will have to find out the value of R. You will get it as 7.5 ohm because what is 100 divided by 8? This is 20, uh, this is 50 divided by 4, uh, 50 divided by 4, so it will become 25 divided by 2. So it is 12.5, 12.5, 12.5 minus 5 isn't it so 25 divided by 2 becomes equal to 12.5 r plus 5 is equal to 12.5 so r is equal to 12.5 minus 5 which will come to be which will come to be 7.5 so 
So 7.5 is our answer. That is option C for question number 34. So for question number 34, we will conclude with 7.5 ohms. Now question number 35. The RMS value of the voltage U of T is equal to 4 is equal to 3 plus 4 cos 3t. RMS value of the voltage U of T is equal to 3 plus 4 cos 3t is is what is the question so we will have to find out the rms value now what is the dc value the dc value is 3 isn't it and what is the ac value ac value peak value is 4 so we will have to take it as 4 by root two. so it is root of 3 square plus 4 by root of the whole square the whole root so it comes to be root 17 so what is our answer our answer is option a root 17 so the similar question we have already did just two questions back okay so this is actually a sum of a dc component and ac component which is taken as the rms value now question number 36 an rl circuit of the figure is fed from a constant magnitude variable frequency variable frequency sinusoidal voltage v in at 100 hertz R and L elements each have an voltage drop U RMS. If the frequency of the source is changed to 50 Hz, then the new voltage drop across R is what is the question. So we will read the question. This is a slightly lengthy question from 2005 question paper for two marks. So the RL circuit of the figure is fed from a constant magnitude variable frequency sinusoidal voltage V in at 100 Hz. The R and L elements each have an voltage drop U RMS. If the frequency of the source is changed from 100 to uh, 50, then the new voltage drop across R is to be found out. Now you see, when your frequency is equal to 50 Hz, we see Vr is equal to Vl and they are saying that it is equal to URMS. Okay? As R and L are series connected, current through R and L are the same. So, uh, IR is equal to IXL is equal to I omega L or r is equal to you can cancel the i r is equal to xl or it is equal to omega l so so what is i the equation for i is v divided by root of r square plus xl the whole square so here we have obtained that r is also equal to xl so instead of xl you can substitute r so it becomes v in divided by root 2 r <coughs> that is what is i and vr equals vr is equal to u rms is equal to i into r now v in is the, the, the current is the current is given as v in divided by root 2 r current i is equal to v in divided by root 2 r so for instead of i you can substitute v in divided by root 2 r so it becomes v in by root 2 r into r or r and r cancel or it becomes v in divided by root 2 now you see Vr is equal to Vn divided by root 2 or Vn is equal to Vr into root 2. Vr into root 2. And what is Vr? Vr is URMS. Okay. So you can write Vn is equal to root 2 URMS. That is what is our final expression. Now what happens is that frequency changes from 100 to 50. Okay. And you see XL is equal to omega L or it is directly proportional to frequency because it is 2 pi f into l so it is directly proportional to frequency so what happens is that when frequency becomes half xl also becomes half so xl becomes equal to xl by 2 which is equal to r by 2 so we will have to substitute r by 2 when you are substituting r by 2 you will get it as 2 v in divided by root 5 r for the value of i and from this you will you will have to find out i dash r which is v r dash and then you are multiplying this equation with i r in i i dash into r so the r and r cancel it becomes 2 by root 5 v in so this is v r dash and now what is v in v in is equal to root 2 u r m s root 2 u rms so instead of v in you can substitute root 2 u rms so it becomes vr dash is equal to 2 by root 5 into root 2 u rms so it becomes root of 8 by 5 u rms so actually what was our 
v in the new voltage drop across r we have to find out what is the new voltage drop across r now the new voltage drop across r is now root 8 by 5 u r m s root 8 by 5 u r m s and what is the choice root 8 by 5 u r m s is option c is option c so initially when it was uh, a frequency of 100 hertz the voltage drop across r and l was both u r m s okay so when frequency is equal to 100 hertz across r and l the both both the drops were u r m s and now when frequency changes to 50 hertz the drop across r becomes equal to root of 8 by 5 u r m s root of 8 by 5 u r m s so that is this question this is a good question and it's a lengthy question and but it contributes to two marks so this kinds of question when it is going to come sometimes a part of this question can come for your examination or a slightly uh, different format with a slow variation of values can come for your examination so these kinds of questions you have to remember in your mind such that we know we have practiced these questions so when a similar question or a part of this question uh, is going to come just on the outskirts of this question you will be able to answer for your examination so this is about that question now we are moving into question number 37 For the three-phase circuit shown in figure, the ratio of the currents IR, IY, and IB is given by. So there is R, B, and Y. There is IR, IB, and IY. So we will have to find out the ratio of the currents IR, IY, and IB. So we have recreated the figure. Uh, there is R1 and R1. There is no uh, resistance on the B phase. So the, this is R, Y, and B. The voltages are given. IR, IB, and IY are shown. Uh, are shown in the figure now uh, we are going to take the voltage phases now we are taking v r y as the reference so v r y is equal to v angle 0 degree v y b is equal to v angle minus 120 degree and v b r is equal to v angle minus 240 degree because every phase voltage is to be every voltage is displaced with respect to each other by by 120 degree so this is uh, v r y and this is uh, v y b and this is v b r and what is the angle between every phase it is 120 degree so you can say if v r y is taken as the reference phaser then v y b equals v angle minus 120 degree and v b r is equal to v angle minus 240 degree so from this we are going to find out the value of currents and what is i r i r is equal to minus v b r divided by r1 so what is minus vbr this is minus vbr so minus of vbr divided by r1 ir we will get it as v by r1 angle minus 60 degree similarly we will find the value of iy also iy is v yb by r1 which is equal to v angle minus 120 degree divided by r1 and you can see ir plus iy plus ic is equal to zero or ir plus iy plus ib is equal to zero so we are putting ib and we will substitute the values of ir and iy to find out the value of ib so from this we can obtain the value of ib as root 3 v divided by r1 minus 90 degree so you can see that for the first two cases it is v by r1 and for the second case also it is v by r1 but for the third case it becomes root 3 v by r1 okay so ir is on a factor the magnitude of ir is on a factor of v by r1 magnitude of iy is on v by r1 but magnitude of ib becomes a factor as root 3 v by r1 root 3 v by r1 so it is v by r1 is to v by r1 is to root 3 v by r1 which will contribute to 1 is to 1 is to root 3 which is option a 1 is to 1 is to root 3 so the ratio of the currents ir iy and ib are as 1 is to 1 is to root 3 so that is about question number 37 now we are moving into question number 38 the circuit shown in the figure is energized by a sinusoidal voltage source v1 this is a sinusoidal voltage source v1 at a frequency which causes resonance with a current of i which causes resonance with a current of i now the phasor diagram which is applicable to the circuit is four options are given a choice b choice c choice and d choice this is 2006 two mark question 
So this is also a good question. So the circuit shown in the figure is energized by a sinusoidal voltage source V1 at a frequency which causes resonance with a current of I. So we will have to make uh, expressions with respect to this um, uh, diagram and we will have to check which of the phasor diagram is applicable to this diagram. So we are recreating the figure and the source is V1, there is R A, R B and L, there is a capacitance with the capacitance value, reactance value Xc and producing a drop Vc across it. The net to voltage across the combination is V2. So we are going to make an equation for Z. So what is Z? Our Z is equal to R A plus R B plus J XL minus Xc. So this is XL. Okay, this is XL. So it is R B plus J XL minus Xc the whole uh, plus ra because this is only the circuit this is only the circuit this is only this is an extension that we have taken to show the voltages so the entire arrangement is in series so it is ra plus rb plus j into xl minus xc now it is said that the circuit is at resonance they are saying that the circuit is at resonance so which causes a resonance with the current of i so there is resonance means xl is equal to xc xl is equal to xc or z is equal to ra plus rb 